Alrighty, it looks like we are live. This is Kevin Roberts with Taylor Smith from NFLSoup.com. We're going to be pushing out some fantasy football player profiles as we continue to prepare for uh, the new fantasy football season. Um, most of our uh, profiles on the more elite players are going to be just straight up articles, but um, guys like you will see here, we don't want to waste our time with articles and we'd rather just uh, bash them with proverbial bats uh, via video. So uh, Taylor and I are going to dive into why and why not Mark Sanchez, yes, Mark Sanchez, would be a suitable fantasy quarterback in 2013. I will be the one to take on why you should draft him. It's going to be very short. <laughs> I can guarantee that. But Taylor, let us all in on why Sanchez is a bad fantasy quarterback to roll with this year or ever. Well... Uh, somehow in 2011 he had 26 touchdown passes, but you gonna say that? <laughs> last year, he had, last year he had 13. He had 18 picks. He's thrown tons of picks. He's thrown 69 picks in four years, which is wow. atrocious. He doesn't throw the ball down the field. He's averaged uh, 6.48 yards per attempt, per attempt, and I'm pretty sure his 6.36 was like 51st in the NFL last year, which is around like. Uh, awful quarterbacks. I, uh, we should start this over. Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> it's hard to take it seriously when it's Sanchez. I understand that. Okay, so he's like Joe Webb. He doesn't throw the ball down the field. He doesn't complete like passes. Joe Webb. <laughs> he completed. He's completed fifty-five percent of his passes for his career. He doesn't run. He has no weapons at all. Jeremy Curley was his best receiver last year. Santonio Holmes is hurt, might not even play. He's not very good to begin with. Stephen Hill is raw, not very good either. Jeff Cumberland and Kellen Winslow are his tight ends. Kellen Winslow, who didn't even play. He played for the Patriots one game last year. Nothing. Uh, his running back is Chris Ivory, who I'm intrigued by, but he's always hurt, so the run game might be trash. There's nothing to like about what Mark Sanchez has going on around him. There's nothing to like about what we've seen from Mark Sanchez in the last four years, other than the team winning in his first two years. So there are so many more awesome fantasy quarterbacks. There's no reason you should ever look at Mark Sanchez. He's garbage. He might not even win the job. So if you draft him now and Geno Smith wins the job, then you're an idiot. You're an idiot for drafting him in the first place. You're an idiot. So no, <laughs> don't draft Mark Sanchez regardless of what Kevin's about to say. Well, all I want to say is, what's not to like? Okay? <laughs> I mean, when haven't you liked your quarterback to throw at least 18 interceptions three out of four years? It always ends well. Okay, in seriousness, I know all the hate on Mark Sanchez, and in even more seriousness, I absolutely do not condone you to draft him, but for the sake of this argument and for the sake of analyzing every player fully... I'm going to tell you why you should con consider not drafting him less. Okay, so that's how that's the way we're going with it. All right, so here we go. First thing, he might be the starter this year. Uh, good reason why is, is because uh, I don't think Rex Ryan is all that high on Geno Smith. I don't think uh, drafting Geno Smith – I mean, this is just me thinking this. This is just my opinion. I don't think Rex Ryan – uh, you know, was completely behind the drafting of Geno Smith necessarily. Um, I think he's just so stubborn that he he wants Mark Sanchez to be the guy. He always has wanted him to be the guy, and maybe he even actually believes he's still the guy. Um, you know, Sanchez hasn't always been terrible. He's actually looked good in stretches. I mean, he did lead this team to two straight AFC title games. Granted, they had an elite defense, but that happened. Um, he has turned into an absolute turnover machine his last two years, uh, but he did have tw 26 touchdowns two years ago. Um, you know, and he also is he's relatively athletic, and he's had 12 rushing touchdowns in four seasons. He had none last year, but he, he had uh, 12 in his previous three seasons, six two years ago. So it's not like there's no upside to be had with Mark Sanchez in, in terms of talent alone. He's not the most accurate quarterback in the world. Uh, you know, his career high in a season is, you know, just under 57%. So he's not accurate. We know that. But it's hard to be accurate when 
you know, you don't have consistent wide receivers, wide receivers that stay healthy, wide receivers that make plays for you and get open. Um, and his, his pass protection also hasn't always been ideal. It's, this is a joke that I'm defending Mark Sanchez in any way, just so you know. But but granted, these are facts. I mean, here's the deal. I mean, Santonio Holmes, if he's healthy, he's probably more of a wide receiver, too, if we're just being honest. But as a wide receiver one, he's not a bad wide receiver one. Braylon Edwards says he's still elite. What if Braylon Edwards is right? <laughs> he's not, but what if Braylon Edwards is right? What if Braylon Edwards and Santonio Holmes return after – you know, three years and are once again a, a pretty effective duo. What if Kellen Winslow's knees go back to being 22 years old instead of 30? They won't, but what if they do? So there's some optimism because the weapons are better. If Winslow plays ahead of Cumberland most of the time, that's good. Uh, obviously, either of those guys are huge downgrade from Dustin, Kell Dustin Keller's talent and reliability. Chris Ivory, though, is the biggest reason... Uh, to have optimism about Mark Sanchez in 2013. That's because if healthy, he's way better than Sean Green, and the running game can actually balance out that offense. The other thing actually working in Sanchez's favor if he wins the starting job is that the offensive coordinator, Marty Mornwig, is saying that they want to throw the ball a lot, which I know is insane for a guy who cannot complete more than 50% of his passes most years and doesn't have any weapons and has a horrible offensive line. <laughs> But if he throws a lot, that gives him more potential to get yardage and score. So the other main thing, the big roadblock, is the competition, though. We all have seen Sanchez play well before. And, you know, believe it or not, it has happened. He has had random weeks where he's like a top five fantasy quarterback. He has done it. So the main thing, though, is, is he going to beat out Geno Smith and is he going to hold Geno Smith off? I don't, I can't tell you that for sure. But what I can say is that Geno Smith is a rookie, and he's still raw, and he's 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 got an ankle injury, so you can hold out hope. But I think what we've learned from this is that Mark Sanchez probably can't be drafted. There's no way Mark Sanchez should be drafted. No, I yeah, I think we're joking that, or we're joking, we're kidding ourselves with Mark Sanchez. Um, I think we just wanted to lay out the pros and cons there, but the point is, even when you lay it out as best as you possibly can and try to be optimistic, it's like all the craziest things in the world have to break right for Mark Sanchez to have any kind of legit fantasy value. I would rather take just about every quarterback that would be starting in the NFL ahead of Mark Sanchez based off of weapons, situation, talent, hairstyle, just so many reasons that I would rather have Chad Henney over Mark Sanchez. So many reasons that I would think about having Matt Flynn ahead of Mark Sanchez. But now that you've got both sides of the story and you know the optimism and the pessimism involving Sanchez, it's up to you. And that's it. We'll, we'll be back with more player profiles. This one was just kind of, eh, we're throwing it out there because nobody's going to draft Sanchez. And if you're thinking about it, don't do it.